Triple E EDC back again with another knife battle. This is the Benchmade Bugout and the Hogue Knives Deca. We're gonna have a uh, battle and see who comes out on top, but I wanted to first let you know, guys, that I have a holiday giveaway going on, so if you have not already entered that, that, go ahead and watch that video. Pause this video, go watch that one, enter the contest, come back. This video will still be here when you come back. Uh, in the meantime, I know you guys have been waiting a while for this video. Uh, I had it ready to go for a while. Um, well, it hasn't been recorded for a while, but I had, had the setup ready to go for a while. And unfortunately, I injured my leg uh, and have been out of it the last few days. And in the meantime, a couple other uh, night reviewers have gone ahead and posted similar battles. That being said, I hope that mine can offer some different perspective. Uh, as you know, I'm pretty blunt, straight to the point, and I don't uh, beat around the bush when it comes to what's really bad or, or I don't like about a knife. So let's talk about what is uh, the battle here. Now, the way I did it was I've got a bunch of categories. I'll go through, I'll mention what they are, uh, and I've sort of uh, rated them one through 10 on where they stand uh, with, within each of these categories. So whereas a lot of times everyone will give one point here if you went, if like, let's say the, the bug out won a category and the deck won another category, it'd be one to one. That's not how mine work. Uh, mine work by awarding numbers between one and 10 for each category. We'll add them up at the end. I think that's a more accurate way of doing it so that, you know, if, uh, if one category, you know, one knife just beats the hell out of the other knife, uh, that is taken into account in the final outcome. So let's talk about what uh, what we got going here. So the, just to, as a heads up, these scales are not the original scales on the bug out. This is the, the uh, GRY version uh, with the coated blade, the PVD coated blade, and uh, it normally has the Ranger Green Grivery scales. The, these are the uh, Alan Putman Micarta scales that I've got on here, and uh, I did not... When I was doing the review, I did not take into account that I had these scales on there, but I will talk about them throughout the time here. Now, this is the original blue bug out. Uh, this does have the original blade on it. These are the original scales. They've been writ dyed black, uh, and these thumb studs are actually mini griptilian thumb studs so that they're black, and we get the all black hardware. So uh, I got that in a trade, and that's the setup uh, that the previous owner had. Okay, uh, now now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about uh, blade blade design. Is going to be the first category here. Uh, and when I talk, when I think about blade design, I'm really thinking about. Uh, and I'm going to tell you the first two categories are blade design and blade utility. So I'm not talking about blade utility when I talk about blade design. I'm just talking about the actual blade design. Um, was it is it designed well? You know, and uh, um, and, and those things. So with the Benchmade bug out. This is a, um, it's, it's, it's a high saber grind. It's uh, mostly flat up until that, you can see the, the saber grind line there. Um, and it's mostly a full flat grind. Uh, besides that, and there's that little swedge on the end. Um, it's an extremely attractive grind on here, I, I think anyway, it's an extremely attractive grind. Uh, it, it leaves some classic lines on this. It's a nice, really good drop point design on here and uh, Again, I think it's just extremely attractive. Uh, and so I'm gonna go ahead and give the bug out a nine for that. Um, now, the Hogue Knives Deca, we've got a little bit of an interesting blade shape here, another high saber grind. Oh, this one's a, a little bit lower. You see the uh, the grind lines coming in over here. Um, the uh, You've got a nice swedge over here with a thumb ramp here with some jumping on top. Uh, one of the things you'll notice on the bug out is there is no jumping on top. Um, I uh, When I gave it a, a 9, I did detract a little bit because there is no jumping there. However, there is some jumping on the inside of the handle, and so I took that into account in the score. Now, with uh, with respect to um, the score here, I gave the Hogue Knives Deca uh, an 8. Um, so the, the Benchmade bug out sort of wins that category. Um, but again, we're, we're going to keep the, the 9 and the 8 for the final score. So the reason I gave this an 8 as opposed to the Benchmade's 9, two things. Um, one is the, uh, just personal taste, I'm not in love with the design aesthetic uh, where you've got this sort of hump here where it goes up and comes down. Um, and uh, I also uh, do not like the placement of the thumb stud. If you notice the between these two, the thumb stud is much closer to the handle on the bug out. And so... 
you know, when you get into um, the actual slicing and utility of the blade, which we'll get to later, that thumb stud uh, is going to be in the way. It's in the slicing path, as you can see, and uh, it's something to keep in mind. Um, both of them have decent sized choils that are effective uh, for sharpening, so um, just something to keep in mind. The other reason that I liked the, uh, uh, the bug out blade a little bit more is the amount of billboarding on the two blades. So you can see the, uh, the Hogue decided to make their billboarding much larger with the Elishowitz on here, and the uh, CPM 20 CV is a little bit uh, larger. I also don't love the font there, so that's another uh, reason why. And then if you look on the front, so the Butterfly is an attractive logo, um, and I do like Benchmade's Butterfly logo, although it is a little large here, I think it fits. Hoag's logo is also attractive, um, however, uh, the fact that they have USA and DECA underneath it, I didn't love. Um, I think if, if they just put Hoag in USA, that uh, Hoag by itself would have been fine, Hoag USA would have been fine. Don't think they need to put DECA on the blade. People who bought this know this is the DECA. Um, <clears throat> and there are other places you could have put this uh, if you really wanted to name it. Um, I'm pretty sure there, there is a reason behind why they did it and that is probably because it's a newer knife and they wanted somebody just looking at this if it's posted on Instagram or something like that to be able to identify what it is and be able to buy it. So I know there's a reason behind it, but that does play into the score. Uh, let's keep this moving along. So blade utility. Uh, I gave both of them an eight and there are pluses and minuses for why uh, I gave both of them an eight. So they're both, I've already described to you the blade design here. Uh, the actual utility gets a notch taken off here because of the thumb stud again. Um, I know I'm sort of double marking it there, but it, it, it does uh, account for that. The other thing is a blade shape here. Um, so I actually think the blade shape is, you, you can see it's very, very similar, although there's a little bit more of a uh, of an out and up on the, the Hoag Deca. I like the blade shape here a little bit better on the bug out. I will say. Um, that being said, and, and also, uh, I think overall, when I cut the, I didn't measure, but I, th I believe the edge is thinner on the bug out than on the, or the edge thickness is thinner on the bug out than on the, uh, the Hoag Deca. That being said, when you cut, they really cut about the same. Um, you really don't notice much of a difference at all when you cut, and therefore, uh, when I scored it, you know, with the, the blade utility, Ultimately, at the end of the day, it's all about cutting, and uh, I, I had to score them the same. The other thing is, is uh, you know, the blade, when I think of blade design, I, one thing I forgot to mention with blade design, by the way, is the blade to handle ratio. I think the blade to handle ratio on both of these is excellent. They're really similarly sized, just something to keep in mind. Um, okay, next uh, category is action and deployment. So, as you guys know, we have the, uh, uh, we have the axis lock. Now, the, I'm going to go ahead and talk about both of these the, uh, because the axis lock sort of plays into the action a little bit here. I have two categories here, action deployment and locking mechanism. Uh, so for here, since they're using the same locking mechanism, excuse me, I can't talk, locking mechanism, they're going to have very similar action, action deployment for the most part, but it does differ in some very important ways. That being said, <clears throat> I did give action and deployment to both of these a 10 and the locking mechanism to both of these are nine, uh, and for, for different reasons. Uh, so with respect to the, the bug out here, um, the, the reason I, I, I like this is it's extremely, uh, it, it's, the action on this is, is just drop shutty, and this is with zero blade play uh, out of the, out of this. A lot of, uh, a lot of knives have a lot of blade play. This one doesn't really have uh, the blade play that a lot of my other knives had. Um, it has a, a little bit, I guess I should say it has a little bit more once I changed the scales out to these scales than it had. It was really rock solid when it was uh, on the original scales. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I have to rate it on what the original scales are because I, I changed these. Um, and this one is, is, uh, is solid as well. So the uh, the fact that there's zero blade play there, uh, or, or very minimal blade play, when you've got the, just this drop shot action, you know, just drop shot action, you just, you literally don't have to flick the wrist at all, you just actuate the button and it just drops. So that is incredible action, I had to give it a 10. 
on the Hogue, uh, it doesn't free drop. And, you know, because this is an axis lock, you can play with the pivot a little bit. I did play with the pivot on the Hogue, and when I did, it did introduce blade play. Uh, it, and the, the more I got the action to be where I wanted it, the more blade play it introduced. Uh, and so I had to tighten it back down and ultimately landed on this being uh, the best action I could get out of it. Uh, that being said, it's still got the, it has a little bit smoother action. The, the feel of it is a little bit smoother on this. It feels a little bit higher quality action uh, than this. And therefore, even though I couldn't get it quite uh, as drop shutty with the axis lock um, without introducing significant blade play, I felt that uh, it, it really merited a tie. Uh, tens on the action deployment because they're just really fun, flickable, you know, great to play with knives. Um, again, just watch your fingers so you don't close uh, close it on there. And uh, yeah, so the, the, that's the scores there. Uh, next was ergonomics. Um, ergonomics, uh, it's it feels more of a clear win uh, when you have these in hand. But when I really got to thinking about it and thinking about how my hand felt on it. Um, it was. It ended up being a lot closer. What I mean by it, it, uh, it feels at first glance, you know, like it's it's more of a clear win, is that, you know, the curvature on the on the Hogue Deca, it sort of, you know, when you first pick it up, you're like, okay, do I like this or I, do I not like this? Whereas on the uh, on the Benchmade Bugout, it's it has that more of a straight, you know, curve where your hands just the the whole hand sort of locks in between this edge and this edge, and uh, and it just really feels good. So I think the uh, the Benchmade bug out actually wins ergonomics, uh, and I think I think most reviewers are, uh, have agreed on that so far, but ergonomics are, is going to go to the Benchmade bug out. I gave the bug out a nine and an eight for the Deca. Uh, I could have given the Deca a seven here. Um, I didn't, uh, and and you know. This is something to keep in mind for later. So uh, go ahead and give that an eight. So we've got ease of carry as the next uh, the next option. So here is sort of an interesting uh, category because I have rated this as an eight. Why have I rated this as an eight? Ease of carry. Uh, this, it has a lot to do with the pocket clip. I do not like the pocket clip here. Uh, or at least I didn't at first. I hated the pocket clip at first. Um, I didn't like the billboarding. I didn't like uh, the fact that it was so thin. It's grown on me. It's actually quite easy to slip out in and out of the pocket despite the texturing on the G10 scales. And uh, so it has grown on me. But to, on this lightweight knife, you really don't want so much of the knife sticking out. Not every knife has to have a deep carry clip, but this one should. So uh, th that is pretty much on ease of carry my biggest criticism the reason I gave it an eight was the pocket clip design uh, I think slicey dicey found a pocket clip on one of the ZTs I can't remember which one you can watch his video on which uh, which pocket clip he chose but it was it was an MXG pocket clip for a ZT um, again I don't remember which one it was like uh, 470 or something like that so uh, just something to keep in mind but with a stock pocket clip, got to give it an eight. The bench, Benchmade bug out. this is where really the Benchmade bug out excels. This is the best carry knife I've ever had. Um, and it just is. And, and, and that's a 10. I gave it a 10. Uh, the pocket clip here is amazing. Uh, it is tiny. It, it hides no matter where you put it. If you put it behind the belt, if you put it in your pocket, it fits so well in basketball shorts. Um, and... You know, it's just, uh, it's it's lightweight. Um, this is where the weight plays in this category. So this is about 1.8 ounces. I should, I should point to this one actually, because this one is uh, the micarta scales. So with the Grivery scales, it's about 1.8. I haven't weighed this, but this actually feels lighter than the Grivery scales, if you believe it or not. Um, and the th this one I know from other people I've seen weigh it is, is like 2.6 ounces or so, 2.5, 2.6. Um, it doesn't seem like a lot, and on most videos, I will tell you that, that a half ounce or 0.7 of an ounce or even an ounce is really not all that much. But when the knife itself weighs only a little bit uh, over an ounce or in between an ounce and two ounces, it's a lot more noticeable, and you really do notice the weight difference. Um, and 
So whereas with a four, five, six ounce knife, an ounce isn't gonna make much of a difference, it really does here, and it's something to keep in mind. Uh, now, obviously, if you put some G10 scales on this, it might make it uh, way more, titanium scales as well, then we might be having a different discussion. So, uh, there are, but there are a bunch of aftermarket scales. So ease of carry, Benchmade Bug gets a 10. Durability, uh, so the durability, I gave the bug out an eight, largely based on my own usage. I've beat it up pretty well uh, and really carry it pretty much every day. It's, uh, it's it, I, I usually carry about two knives. Um, the Benchmade bug out is almost always my backup knife, uh, either that or the bailout, and because it's so easy to carry and, uh, and light, but that means that it gets a lot of use. It gets probably more use than all of my other knives. And it just holds up like a champ, uh, despite the Grivery. And I, and I carried this for a while with the Grivery scales, and I still carry this with the Grivery scales. So no complaints here. Zach's, Zach from Zach Stuff also has a video where he beats the hell out of it, and it keeps on ticking. And so uh, I gave it an 8 for durability. Uh, I, I haven't beat the hell out of this Hogue, but it does feel more durable. I will say that it feels more solid. It feels in, in every way more of a uh, uh, less flimsy knife. I'm not saying that the Benchmade bug out is flimsy, but it uh, feels in every way more flimsy, uh, less flimsy knife. Sorry, guys, I get the notification that my battery is running low, so I uh, had to turn that off. Okay, so... Uh, now where are we? So we're on durability, so 9 for the Hogue uh, Deca and 8 for the Benchmade Bug Out. Disassembly. Um, so on disassembly, I gave the Benchmade Bug Out a, and, and, and I'm, I'm just changing the score now because I just remembered something. Um, and so it's going to change uh, something at the end of the video as well. But the Benchmade bug out is a pain to take apart. The Hogue Deca is a pain to take apart. And that has a lot to do with the Axis Lock. The Axis Lock is a pain in the ass to take apart. Um, if you're just changing scales uh, or changing the show, show side scale, it's not, not that big of a deal. But when you change the pivot side scale... Or, I mean the um, the lock side scale on what norm on the, I should I can't even talk. It should be the clip side scale is, is what I'm doing because it's an ambient knife, ambidextrous knife. So when you're changing the clip side scale, it it, it does become more problematic because the clip side scale has the um, uh, has the D in it, the the D indent, and that makes it harder to change uh, for most people. Uh, I'm just realizing that I think I flipped the uh, the pivot on this one, but. Anyway, uh, so it is a pain in the butt to take apart. So neither one of these scored high on disassembly. That being said, I mean, let's, let's be real on this. Look how many screws are in each one. That dictates the score here. So even though the Benchmade bug out did not do well with a four for disassembly, uh, the Hogue Knives Deca finished with a three for disassembly, um, and it is what it is. Fit and finish, uh, for the most part, both of these are good. Um, the bug out, Benchmade gets crap for QC, and I've, I've seen a lot of people who have the Deca who uh, claim that the fit and finish is excellent, like, you know, way better than Benchmade's. Um, on mine, the centering came a little bit off, just like a lot of Benchmades have QC issues, and uh, a lot of the same uh, issues where the action on the axis lock needs to be broken in uh, were here, were present here. It was not pre-broken in, uh, or you know, sent from the factory with tolerances such that it didn't need to be broken in. So there was sort of that sticking that you get from. Uh, pulling back or when the knife is deployed hard and you get that sort of uh, resistance to pulling the, the spring back. Um, just something to keep in mind. Oh, one more thing. Uh, Slicey Dicey was pointing out on his review, that, that just reminds me of an earlier issue. Uh, Slicey Dicey was pointing out on his review that the uh, springs, the Omega springs inside of here are much better than the Omega springs inside of here. Um, so 
yes, they feel more solid, and this this had to go with the uh, um, the locking mechanism. Yes, they feel more solid, but they're also a little bit less of a joy to to play with because these are so much easier to pull back. So it's just that was part of the scoring that went into uh, the locking mechanism was that was the spring. This is an easier spring to use. This is a harder spring to use, but this spring is more prone to breaking than this spring. So that's why they balanced each other out a little bit among the other things I've already discussed. Okay, moving back to fit and finish. Um, so the Hug Deca has had these uh, these couple of QC issues. Uh, also, you know, the pocket clip here, um, I think it's already showing some signs of wear, if you look there. And uh, so sort of the... The finishing, I consider that a finish issue because the finishing on the clip, um, if you're going to do a paint, a, a pocket clip that has um, a color on it, it should, I think it should be parkerized or whatever process is used so that the paint bonds the material. Um, Benchmade doesn't do that for a lot of their clips, um, and there is some rub here on these, but these clips tend to hold up much better than a lot of Benchmade's other clips. Um, and. Uh, so that's part of the fit and finish as well. So those scored a very similar on fit and finish because I found at the end of the day, the Hope Deca is not leaps and bounds ahead on fit and, uh, fit and finish uh, on Benchmade, especially recently. Um, I know Benchmade had some issues in the past, but recently Benchmade, all the Benchmades I've gotten have been uh, pretty good. I, I've had very few issues with the exception of one which uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works told me ahead of time had a severe lock sticking issue. And uh, they called me to verify if I still wanted it because it was the last one in stock. I said, go ahead and send it to me anyway, and I'll send it back if it wasn't uh, working. And the lock stick work worked itself out, much like the lock stick worked itself out in this Hogue Knives Deca. So at the end of the day, uh, eight for the Hogue Knives De Deca, eight for the Benchmade Bug Out in Fit and Finish. Uh, aesthetics, so these are good and bad for different things. Um, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the aesthetics of the bug out, um, I think they're detracted a little bit by the plastic scales. Um, also, I don't find the blue one especially attractive, but I can see why some people might. Um, so I'm kind of glad that the uh, previous owner had dyed these scales, but I, I find the Ranger Green one to be extremely attractive. Um, uh, so it's just some uh, to keep in mind there. Uh, it, the the GRY one just looks excellent. And I think it just based on looks alone, it's worth the extra money over the normal, um, over the normal uh, blue bug out. That being said, um, the plastic does have its limitations. The gravity does have its limitations. It doesn't look the best. I mean, it looks okay in photos, but in person, it doesn't look the best uh, to see plastic on your knife. So I do have to say, just seeing G10 here, and the way they did it is pretty nice. Uh, it's textured. It's got this g mascus, which is what they call it. Um, I was doing air quotes, but you couldn't see. Um, the uh, the g mascus here, and it's basically just layer G10 that uh, has scoring cut out of it that also is sort of mixed the colors a little bit. Um, even uh, where there's no scoring. Uh, so that's why you get some of the color variation here in addition to where it's scored. So, or I shouldn't say scored, milled. This is the appropriate word here. So, you know, with uh, with aesthetics, I, on the one hand, really like the bug out um, in the range of green, uh, with the, even with the original scales, and I really enjoy the uh, Hogue Deca, both are going to get an 8 for aesthetics. Um, X Factor and Feel, uh, I think. So, I think the... I, I'm going over and over this. I had, it, I had it written down one way, and now I'm sort of downing myself. So, I'll say like this. The, yeah, I'm going to change it back to the way I had it. I had changed it and I, I changed it back again. So this is sort of organic as it's going on, but I did pre-plan some of this. So the X factor on the, 
the way the way I feel X Factor and Field goes about is does this knife make me happy? You know, does the way it feels in my hand and the way uh, you know do does it make does it have that thing that separates it from other knives that that uh, inexplainable thing that separates from other knives and i think the benchmade bug out has that um i think it has it in spades uh but the gravity scales do detract from it and i don't get that true bug out um x factor unless i have the micarta scales on it uh so you know i've i had it a, a I sort of waffled back and forth with this, but I'm going to give the uh, the bug out a nine just because it's just so damn terrible as a first knife, as a secondary knife, as whatever. Throw it in your pack, throw it in your car, throw it anywhere. It's just it's so it's not just the ease of carry. It's the it's just the way it, it all comes together, and it's hard to describe. The Hoke knives Deca, uh, it doesn't quite have the same. X factor feel as the bug as the bug out, but it just has, you know, a more solid feel. Like like you just want to carry it. Um, like you just wish the bug out was a little bit solid like this sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes. Um, and uh, and so I actually tied them at nine on that. They both uh, ended up with nine. Value of materials. This is where the Hogue Knives Deca is a clear, clear win. So at, I've, I've talked to you guys before on my channel about how I do not think that for most users, unless you're the guy in the back of a warehouse cutting down boxes all day long, um, for most users of these knives, if you EDC in an office or anything like that, um, S30V and, and 20CV, uh, which are the d different blade steels here. These are both S30V, this is 20CV. They're not going to make much of a difference. But it is, there, there's just something nice about knowing that you have that nicer quality thing. And there are those people that, you know, need that nicer quality thing. So 20CV is a clear upgrade, I think most people would say, over S30V. Uh, and the G10 scales, especially the way they're milled and everything like that, is a clear upgrade over Grivery. Uh, and it's such a clear upgrade over it. Um, and so the, the last, uh, I, I should actually um, introduce the last category. Last category is val value of materials. And it's such a large upgrade that it's surprising that it actually comes in at, at approximately the same price uh, for most of them. So, you know, this is this is cheaper. I think these run about 115, 120. Um, they used to run about 105 before the price hike. The GRY ones run about 135. Um, and the Hope Deca, so the normal ones run 140-ish, I think, on Blade HQ. And these run 148, the one with the black blade, because it comes in both satin and black blade, just like these, satin and uh, satin and PVD coating, although they also have a black blade, which, which was the Blade HQ exclusive. Um, and I think the Knife Works exclusive, Knife Center exclusive bug out is also a black blade. But um, this is 148 for this version uh, with the black blade. So from a price perspective, you are getting Superior quality G10, superior quality uh, steel, superior quality springs, as Slicey Dicey pointed out, and you just get all superior quality for basically the same price. And even over this one, the difference is negligible if you're really doing an everyday carry. I mean, think about it. If you if you're talking about twenty, thirty dollars for something that you're going to carry every day of your life. Um, you know, that, that you're just going to use all the time. I don't think it's a big deal to spend the extra money. Um, you're going to spend more than that on a trip to Baskin Robbins or the movies or something like that. So, um, you know, for people who say, I don't want to spend that much on a knife, look, if you're already spending a hundred bucks, you should, you should go ahead and get something that's good. So that's the way I feel about that. So at the end of the day, value materials, I gave a nine to the, the Hogue Deca, and this is where the bug out sort of failed a little bit. I gave the bug out a six. Uh, so go ahead and add all of those up, and you get a very sort of interesting outcome here. 
even though the bug out won a lot more categories, barely on a lot more categories, the value of materials made up so, so much ground that even though the bug out still wins, the final score is 98 to 97 uh, for the bug out out of the, out of the categories. So the bug out does win, and the reason I think it wins, um, well, I've already talked about some of the reasons, but it does have some added benefit on why it's, uh, it wins. It's sort of the reigning champion uh, here for lightweight ADC. It also is the, it, it comes, I should say it has a bunch of aftermarket parts available, um, so you can customize it and make it whatever way you want to make it. There's all sorts of special editions. There's a limited edition G10 one that just came out. Although, again, for the tw same materials, 20CV and, and G10, JG10, uh, that was, I think, 199 when it came out, and it was a limited run, so good luck getting one now for less than 250 ish on the secondary market. You're going to see a lot of them go for 300 So, um, in any event, your clear winner, the Benchmade, not clear winner, I should say, your close winner, the Benchmade bug out here. I know this probably disagrees with some other channels uh, that have been out there, uh, but I think I've justified my points, and I would like to hear your, your uh, time below. It's been over 30 minutes, so I want to hear f below from you, if you're still with me, which one do you like better? Have you tried, have you handled both? And uh, do you carry either? And what do you think of these two wonderful knives? Um, just as an aside, I'm not getting rid of, rid of any of these. These are all staying in my collection, uh, and that's how much I love them. You really can't go wrong with either. If you're new and you're asking me whether, you know, should I buy the Bug Out or should I buy uh, the, you know, the Hope Deca, I hate to be that guy, but do what makes you happy. Uh, do what makes you happiest. What, what looks aesthetic, aesthetically the best to you? Um, it's not going to make a major difference in your carry, most likely, so get what you think looks the best. If you want to customize, you're probably going to want to go to the, with the Benchmade bug out, but you're going to be spending more money. If you, you know, you're okay with one of the four options that this comes in. Oh, and I should also mention this comes in a Warncliffe blade or will be coming in a Warncliffe blade soon, but it's a compound grind Warncliffe, so I'm not as excited as I would be if it was a full Warncliffe. Okay, with that out of the way, um, have a great day, guys. Go enter the giveaway if you haven't entered the giveaway. If you're still watching this after 32 minutes and you haven't get, entered the giveaway, enter the giveaway. Come on, guys. It's free knives. Crisp, in, in time for the holidays, in time for Christmas. So, uh, so get to me. Go ahead and like the video, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so that you can get all of my content, and thank you so much for watching.